So today we'll be going over torsion and what torsion is essentially is let's say you have a rod or a shaft and a torque is being applied to the shaft causing it to want to rotate. Now this is where you have torsion and the main application for this is whenever you want to transfer power usually through drive shaft. So let's say you have a shaft or a rod and on one end let's say it's fixed and then on the other end, we have a torque being applied, which essentially makes the shaft or rod want to rotate. And so since it's fixed on one end, it'll actually deform and look a little bit like this. And so you realize at the fixed end, the shaft stays fixed, right? There's no movement, no, no deformation. But the farther you get along to the shaft where the torque is being applied, the more it deforms or it twists the rod. And essentially this deformation here is known as the shear strain. And this angle from here to here would be phi or the angle of twist. Now in this case, the rod is going to be experiencing shear stress and you could actually look at the shear distribution. So looking at the cross section, here is the shear distribution. And as you can see, the further you get out from the radius, the further out you are, the shear stress actually increases. Once you're at the center or what we call the neutral axis, you have absolutely no shear stress. And then on the other side, it's the exact opposite, right? The other direction, the shear stress that it's experiencing. So the further out you are, the higher the shear stress that it will experience from the center of the radius. So to solve for the shear stress within this shaft or rod is this is the equation that you're going to be utilizing. The shear stress is equivalent to T, which is the torque. C is the distance from the center. So this would be your C at any given point from the center of the center of the rod all the way up to the outer edge divided by the polar moment of inertia. So this is your equation. However, when it comes to any design, we always design for a worst case scenario. So in this case, we're looking at the maximum shear stress that the rod is going to be experiencing, which is the torque times the radius of this rod divided by the polar moment of inertia of the rod. And this is the equation that we're going to be utilizing to solve for the maximum shear stress. And similar, similarly, like Hooke's law, we have Hooke's law for the shear stress, which relates the shear stress and the shear strain. So the shear stress is equivalent to the shear modulus G times shear strain. And this is another useful relationship that you could use. So let's go ahead and do an example. So the problem statement is the solid shaft is fixed to the support at C and subject to the torsional loading shown. Determine the shear stresses at point A and B. So here we have this rod here and we have a torque being applied close to the center here, 10 kilonewtons per meter. And at the very end, we have another torque being applied for kilonewton per meter. As you can tell, they're at opposite directions. Now we're supposed to calculate the shear stresses at point A, which is 50 millimeters from the center of the rod, and point B, which is right at the surface, or 75 millimeters from the center of this rod, because the radius is 75 millimeters. So here is our sh maximum shear stress formula, which is torque times the radius divided by the polar moment of inertia. So first things first, we could go ahead and solve for the polar moment of inertia. And usually you could always find the equations for these in the back of the book in a table. And you could just have the formulas there. So our polar moment of inertia is equal to pi radius to the fourth power divided by two, which gives us this small number, which the unit is meter to the fourth power. And keep in mind, I converted the millimeters into, into meters to keep it consistent and to simplify once we're solving for the shear stress. So first, let's go ahead and do the solve the shear stress for point A. So here, what exactly is the torque that's ex is 
that point A is experiencing. So you, we, we see that the nearest torque being applied to the shaft here is 10 kilonewton meters, but there's another one towards the end, 4 kilonewton meter. Now, what torque would it be? would point A be experiencing? Well, let's just imagine first going one by one. If you have 10 kilonewtons of newton meter torque applied here, then that's going to rotate this, por this portion of the shaft that direction. However, it's being um, negated or there's a torque going opposite direction of 4 kilonewton meter so initially it's going to twist 10 is going to twist due to that torque however it's going to cancel a portion of it out due to the 4 kilonewton meter at the end so it's essentially 10 kilonewton meter take away the 4 kilonewton meter which gives us a total torque of 6 kilonewton meter that point A would experience, point A within this section of shaft, right? And the radius here we see is 50 millimeters, so we convert it into meters, 0 0.05 meters here, divided by the polar moment of inertia, which is this number here, and it gives us 6,036 kilonewtons per meter squared, or kilopascals. That's the shear stress at point A. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention, this isn't the maximum stress that this rod experiences. This is at point A. Because remember, the maximum shear stress that I would experience would be at the surface. In this case, would in fact be point B, which we're going to solve right now. So, what is the shear stress at point B? So, we know the radius here is 75 millimeters, so essentially right at the surface. So, we know this is going to be the maximum stress that this rod is going to experience due to that reason. Now, what exactly is the torque? Now, point B might be a little bit tricky to solve. You could always look at what exactly would be your um, reactive torque, your torque that cancels, that would put this shaft in equilibrium, right? The 10 kilonewtons going clockwise, 4 kilonewtons going counterclockwise what would be this reaction torque at the fixed end such that it's in static equilibrium here. And then for point A, right, we essentially just analyze the shaft from the fixed end all the way to this point. So we would only have that reaction torque and it would be the summation of the torques, which it gives a six kilonewton meter. That's another way of looking at it. Now for point B, you could do the exact same thing. You could cut it at this section and you could either analyze the shaft, looking at it from this perspective, the fixed end towards the 10 kilonewtons, or you can analyze only the portion with the four kilonewtons here that it's going to be experiencing, right? From the 10 kilonewtons to here, it's only going to be experiencing the 4 kilonewtons. Just like we did in statics, looking at the internal forces, you could always analyze an object from one side or the other and still get the equivalent result. In this case, you can analyze it from point B going to the 4 kilonewton to, towards the right to make it simpler. In this case, the torque that causes the shear stress at point B would be the 4 kilonewton meter right times the radius 0 0.075 meters divided by that polar moment of inertia which gives us 6036 kilopascals of shear stress so as you can see they're both equivalent however they experience the different torques but due to the distance from the center of the shaft the shear stresses basically were the same, right? Um, one of them experienced less torque. However, it, since it was at the surface, it's going to experience higher shear stress. For that reason, that's why they're the same, even though the torques are different values. So this is how you saw for the shear stress within a rod when a rod is 
experiencing torsion or a torque such that it wants to twist the rod itself. Now, the only thing that could be a little bit more challenging here is to actually find such as this, you're dealing with a system with multiple torques being applied. So the question is, what torque do you use for the equation to solve for the, for the shear stress here? Well, you go back to how you did in static solving for the internal forces. Um, you could always cut up a of the object itself and either analyze it on the left hand side or the right hand side and you will get the exact same result.